Today's topic is multi-material print on Bumble Lab X1 Carbon. To be more exact, using, mixing, combining ASA and TPU in one part. This is the part that we will now design, slice and print step by step. As you can see, it's a kind of damper between two plates. The base and the top plate are made of ASA, while the elastic part in the middle is made of TPU. I want to note right from the start the workflow I'm about to show involves a manual filament change. But before you leave now, it's really super easy. So no AMS is required, therefore the process should work the same for all other bumper printers like the P1 or the A1. Before we start, this filament mixture works because the processing temperatures of ASA and TPU are not very far apart. In my case, the recommended temperature range for the ASA filament from Everyone is between 230 and 260 degrees Celsius, while the range for TPU 95HF from Bamboo is between 200 and 250 degrees Celsius. Here's everything we will be using today. The Bumble Lab X1 Carbon, but without AMS. Therefore, I removed it. Important note, removing the AMS is not required. I only remove the unit so that it is obvious to everyone that we would be changing the filament by hand. A filament dryer, I only use this as a filament holder, the ASA filament, TPU filament, engineering pull plate and glue. Just to mention, I'm using a 0.4mm nozzle. For designing the part, I will use Autodesk Fusion. Let's jump straight to it. Sorry, I forgot to change the language in Fusion to English. Anyway, the design is quite simple. The only thing I would like to specially point out is that it is best to create individual bodies for the different material groups. In our case, we have three bodies when we export the part as step. Now we come to Bumble Studio. Here we now have to make some settings and adapt filaments. That you can save yourself the work, you will find a link to the project in the video description. However, I recommend that you take a few minutes to understand what has been changed and how the whole thing works now. Let's drag in our exported step file. Right click on the part, select split and then select into parts. The slicer has now automatically divided the component into the three bodies that we have created earlier in Fusion. Now we change to assembly view. With the two sliders at the bottom, you can change the view settings. Let's assign the filament. I'm using filament 5 for ASA and filament 6 for TPU. It doesn't matter what configuration you currently have there. We are going to configure these filaments in a second. Fine, let's set the print profile. I'm using a modified 0.2mm profile here. It's basically the standard profile with reduced print speed. Next we're going to configure the filaments. Let's reset to generic ASA and to modified generic TPU, which is my standard print profile for TPU prints. Check out my last video for further details. We can see in the lower right corner that the slicer refuses our settings due to the huge temperature difference of the filaments. In my first attempt, I adjusted all the temperatures of the two filaments by hand. The slicer still didn't eat the settings. So here's a little trick. We set the filament in slot 5 equal to the filament in slot 6 to generic TPU. And now we adjust filament 5. We call it ASA dummy. Let's change all parameters to the values from generic ASA. For temperature, we use 245 degrees Celsius. This value is suitable for ASA and TPU. For volumetric flow, I use 5 cubic millimeters per second. In my opinion, this leads to better surface print quality. But it is up to you if you would like to go with a standard value of 12 cubic millimeters per second. Same thing in the cooling settings. Just copy all values from the generic ASA. Disable the setup in the next tab. And finally copy the G code from generic ASA in the last tab. A final check. 
looks good. Okay, now we also need to tweak the filament 6 slightly. Let's call this generic TPU for ASA mix, ASA bottom. You maybe already know why. We need to change the bed temperature, otherwise our print bed would cool down when we switch to TPU filament later and this will probably cause the ASA part to come loose. That's why we also set the temperatures here to 90 degree. For the sake of completeness, if the lowest layer of the printed part were made of TPU, we would have to set the print bed temperature for both filaments to 30 degrees Celsius. Awesome, almost done. Let's slice the part. Now there is one last step before we can send the print job. We need to add a pulse when the filament should be changed. Therefore, we drag the slider at the right side till we see the first layer of the new filament. Important, not the last layer of the old filament, we need to see the first layer of the new filament. Now right click on the slider handler, this plus icon and select add pulse. If you hover over the button, you can see in the tooltip that this will add a pulse at the beginning of the layer. Now slice again and now with the slider at the bottom, we can preview the print process of the layer and also see the G-code. If we drag the slider all the way to the right and look at the G-code, we can see a pulse entry there. Let's repeat this procedure for the second filament change. All right. Now we are ready to print. Before we start the job, let's take a quick look at the printer. I placed the printing plate in the printer and applied some glue, as in the past ASA components have sometimes come off during printing. We set the material from the external spool to ASA and load ASA filament from everyone. That's it, let's send over the job. Now everything is running as usual, bed leveling, flow calibration and off we go. Now the G-code arrived at our break. This is what it looks like on the printer. So that we can now change the filament, we press continue in the pop-up and then immediately press pause again in the interface. Now we can switch to the settings as usual and unload our ASA. What we can't do is change the material in the user interface. So we load TPU with the ASA settings. Since, as explained at the beginning, the temperature ranges are so close to one another, this works without any problems. Once the TPU is loaded, we switch back to the print job and press continue. That was it, actually quite simple. The fans now only rotate very quietly because we are now using the TPU print settings. As we reach the next breakpoint, we repeat the procedure. Press continue and then immediately break. Switch over to the filament settings, unload TPU and load the ASA filament and continue. After a few minutes our print is finished. The result is pretty nice. We have some small strings, but they can be easily removed. The best thing is, layer adhesion is very good. Quality of Z-Seam could be a little bit better, but this is related to the TPU print settings. Also, the perch tower has a quite nice surface. The only thing that bothers me a little are these ASA inclusions in the TPU. There seems to be residue in the nozzle here. Maybe you can optimize this a little bit by changing the nozzle temperature. For me the result is quite okay. I will try to use this procedure to print the case with an in-place ceiling. 
I'm currently tinkering with my soil moisture sensors and therefore running a few tests to see whether the 3D printed parts from the Bamboo Lab are waterproof. If you are interested, I will cover this topic in the next episode. Now I'm curious about your results and your use cases. And in case you have suggestions to optimize this workflow, please share with us. Finally, thank you all for the great feedback on my first video here on YouTube. I was really happy and hope that it will be helpful again this time. Thanks for watching, see you next time and in the meantime, happy making.